to get into all those hairy details we need to do the the intro all over again but because for some reason the mute was on so hi guys happy hey guys scott for dummies (laughs) here we're having a good thursday let's hit that intro again we will reset and refocus uh four three two one go and that's how we do it around. All right. Here. So I'm not, thanks for letting us know. We've got comments. Are you going to do the intro again? Yeah. No, but that intro had sound, I think. Oh, of course. But okay. uh, so I'm gonna if you're off. watching the replay, sorry, uh, the stream guard did not unmute when we weren't supposed to. So my fault. Okay. So thanks. anyway, thanks, happy thanks, Thursday. Mark, we have a pretty cool topic tonight. Glenn Glendronic. Glendronic. Why are we talking about Glendronic? I'm sure you guys heard of Glendronic. You know about him. Maybe we you love him. Maybe you don't. But the interesting yep. thing that we really want to get into is the whole premise of the Glendronic, I don't know, I will call it the mothball hiccup. I don't know what, you know, there's not really a name for this, but no. the mm-hmm. Glendronic 21 is the last of their core lineup that still, this still pertains to. So it's this gold bottle, the parliament. And what's going on in that, the liquid in that bottle is still older than what the label says. And actually the real, why we're getting in this right now is if you buy a bottle of Glendronic parliament 21, that has been bottled in 2022. That's where we're at now, guys. That's 2022. It's 2022 already? That whiskey's 27 years old. So why, how? We're going to get into all that. We're going to do this. We're going to have some fun with it. There's a lot of really good, interesting information. We'll take it a couple steps further. We'll go through the the um, the core. We'll get into some of their single cask bottlings because I mean, there's a whole underground movement of lovers that get into this. Um, Travis, we'll, we'll show yep. you guys how to how to check your bottles, what yep. that's about, and what to check it against, um, and then talk about kind of the issues of surrounding it and it, the future of Glendronic. Where is it going, right? And and we'll get to that after you've heard yep. a little bit of the story. So, bottom line up front, if you like Glendronic and you're interested in their 21 year old, this is your this to is buy good. it. This and we'll is tell you why. Year. Yeah. All right. Um, this is a good story. This is a really interesting one because I don't know about you guys, but you know, being in the Scotch for a while, one of my favorite things to do is go hunting for dusties. And this is definitely in that category of hunting, like finding that magical bottle. You don't know what you're going to get sometimes. Yeah. I mean, so I get questions all the time about, okay, so if I'm trying to get a bottle of Scotch for somebody that I, you know, they're not in this, they're, they're like a whiskey drinker, but they want Scotch and I want to give them something. What do I get them? This Glendrona 12 is typically one of the, if they're in that 70 to $80 range, this is one of the first ones I get there. Yep. Because this one is just really flavorful and really tasty and it's not smoky and it doesn't blow you out. You know, it's, it's not one of those obscure peated ones that maybe people aren't into. If you like whiskey, you'll like Glendrona. It's an easy, right. It's an easy jump for it's a bourbon drinker or single mar- American single malt to, to come over and love it. It right? is delicious. <laughs> It's and, so good. And so so that's number one. And that doesn't even get into all these other oh, bottles yeah, you got up here. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. Sure. So, I mean, we actually have one on 12 court and, glass, and we're going to get into it, but uh, I'll start off with just a little bit of the basic history of, yes. the, of the distillery. Right. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's got a very typical Scottish distillery history, which we all know that started in the 1800s, was bought and sold. I don't bought know, and sold, matter. open, closed, burned down, you know, whatever. <laughs> Mothball? It, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what's all that really mean, right? So let's go back and give you a little bit of the, the, yep. the meat and potatoes, right? Founded in 1826 by a guy named James Allardyce, which is what the 18 is named after. Yeah. Yeah, coincidental, yeah. right? Yep. Um, interesting, and, and I'm going to go through these kind of Quick. I don't expect you to memorize these, but there's going to be some names that come out that we're going to reference later on in the show. So it's it's opened in 1826 by James Allardyce, right? And then in 1830, four years later, um, Walter Scott from Teenanick buys it. Okay, pretty pretty typical history. Then this other guy, Captain Scott, uh, buys it in 1920. Williams, Teachers and Son, buy it in 1960. Okay, so it's typical. Found, found very typical. Guess what? In 1996, it gets shut down. It gets it gets mothballed. So why? So that's the that is the white spirit craze, isn't it? That's yeah. the Zima. That's the vodkas. That's the that's the era. So the late eighties, early nineties, right. when white spirits were hot and brown spirits were not really bad. And yeah. I, and you can look at the history of. I would say it's probably easy to say like half of distilleries got mothballed or something. Between, between 85 and 95. Probably more than half. Yeah. I mean, a lot. Like almost, I remember doing our reviews from years. It's like, oh, it's mothballed. Oh, right. it's mothballed. Uh, and I remember mothballed. at that point in time, Sean was like, there's our ticket, guys. We need to buy that damn store. That's right. right. <laughs> that one's closed. Let's go buy it. You only need five million bucks. That's right. No problem. No problem. <laughs> but we're going to talk about what mothballed is and what it means. And That's especially key. To That's the key. Story. Oh, that is. But important. let's finish what happened. So in 1996, it's mothballed. And then in 2002, it gets reopened. Uh, Allied Distillers is the owner at the time. They reopen it. Um, it gets passed on or actually purchased by Pernod Ricard, Pernod Ricard and passed to Chivas Brothers, who mm -hmm. is owned by Pernod Ricard in 2005. And then Ben Riek buys it, right? Ben Riek in 2008 buys it. Now, what you need to know about Ben Riek at the time, good whiskey. <laughs> Good whiskey owned by Billy Walker. Oh, Remember that oh, name? That name. We'll Billy, come back to that. Okay, so Billy times. Walker, Billy Walker took possession in 2005. Is what you're saying? Uh, 2008. 2008. Okay. Right. So then in 2009, they start pumping out whiskey again. Okay. So it was closed from 2000 or uh, 1996 to 2002. Uh, two. Yeah. So 2002. in 2009, he introduces the core range and uh, before oh, that okay. glenn dronick is not got single age statements okay they're they're like any other scotch distillery out there that's usually producing from blends they're, they don't have a ton of age so statements they, they, they got non-age statements ton of right. they got billy walker actually ends up per, procuring when he makes when, when ben Reed buys, buys it uh, over thirty-five thousand casks okay and he wants to introduce age stated whiskeys so he comes out with a core range 12 15 18 21 boom i want to do these so he's got all this whiskey and he's going to go ahead minute. so 2009 he started doing the the, the age of whiskey but they've only been distilling since 2006 we'll get to 2002 this. okay just, just wait right just right wait. exactly what? exactly it, right it's so wait. great great you're you're leading you, you're, you're setting you're up sleuthing a, on us over but he's there. setting up a current you know a nice floater for me to head over right how can you throw That's out weird. a 12 year old whiskey That's when you've only weird. been you got cast from 2002. Well, let's go to the story. One more buyer, 2016. We actually were got impacted by this one. Brown Foreman buys them in 2016. Yep. And I remember when that happened because we were literally just introduced to this That's little right. lovely lady. That's right. <laughs> and they went, hold on, put it back up. Right. And so the big talk is like, oh, my God, is Brown Foreman going to shut down the 12, the 15, the 18? What's going to happen to these whiskeys? And thankfully... Brown Foreman's like, yeah, don't don't screw with the thing that's working right well, now. Well, and, and the beauty was that these had the old uh, distributors labels on them, so you could buy them by the case for forty bucks. That's right, the could, bicycle guy. <laughs> that's you, right. You could buy them by the case for forty the bucks a bottle guy. because they were trying to get rid of the old distributors' numbers and put Brown Foreman on them. So they were they were. If you go back, this is actually fun. <laughs> if you're watching this in the replay, go back, go on our channel and search back a long time ago. Yeah. 
I don't even know. I think it was well, obviously right around 2016. Yeah, what yeah. was we did a review on? Right I think it was Kilcarran or something like that. And anyway, towards yeah. the end of the uh, the shoot, this guy rode in in bicycle gear, like head to toe. He just comes in after a ride, looks like he's watching us for a little bit, and then to your point. There was these big boxes of Glen Drone. We were, was a pyramid. We didn't was know pyramid. much about it. We were so in the beginning. Of, we're just like, more, like everything is new to us. Right. And so this guy is like, yeah, it's good. Nice to meet you guys. Grabs a box. A case. And it's just walking. Throws it the walking right. a, and we're like going, yeah. we're looking at him going, what the hell is he doing? He doesn't know what he's doing, right? What's going on? And so we ended up buying a case too because it was actually a good price. Yeah, it was, it was $40 a bottle for it was real cheap. whiskey. So yeah, it's the yeah. old label stuff. So somebody knew what they were already what was going right. on. Now so, what they ended up doing was they just ended up slapping stickers on all the bottles to put the new distributor yeah. and stuff. But anyway, it's they're still here, obviously, mm -hmm. which thank God they are. Yeah, they do. But so that gets you up to where we are and what's happened with Glendronic. I guess the 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 key takeaway there is that they were shut down from two thousand from nineteen ninety six to two thousand two. Right mm -hmm. in that, that time period. Um, I want to go through what they do actually have to offer. According to them, uh, the Glen Drunk website, these are the core range right here. 12, 15, 18, 21. That's core. Um, the uh, cask 8, cask strength 8 is part of the limited, right? Okay. And they have a port wood. Um, and That's they right. have the Kingsman edition. That's right. Which you better get your wallet off for that one. Ooh, it's expensive. But and they also have these cask bottlings. And we'll talk about these at the end of the, the show a little bit because these are there there is definitely a cult following for those. They're they're delicious. Hit Travis, Travis would come. Yeah, what did he say here? All right, this one. So so Travis uh has the date. So the last okay. day of production, February of 1996, reopened May of 20. Of 2002 so that's yeah that's about what you're mm -hmm. saying i think yep yeah that's, right I mean, it aligns with what you're saying you should yeah so he's got exact there. dates yep. so really the, the catch of the whole the whole thing the secret what you need to know about glendronic is that with this period of downtime it ends up with whiskey that's older and we'll explain how they get to that but what does mothball mean when when you're all oh, they mothball the distillery I guess they just shut it down, right? So I look it up, and according to, to the definition, a mothball distillery is a mothball uh, a distillery that still exists but is no longer in operation. So they're not making new spirit. No, so right, not it's laying like you down put the new mothballs in there to keep you know things away. Put balls out, yeah. And so you just stop distilling. So do you think they really put mothballs on? You, no. Oh, no. Damn, I was saying well, yeah, the mothballs don't like copper, so yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so essentially. Yeah, you, you stop distilling. I mean, you, you, there, there's no more money flowing in to pay for the grain and for the employees and for it's an the energy. Warehouse. You just you just you just stop making. stuff. Okay, but you stop making. Yeah, but it, that doesn't mean they're still aging. The stuff sitting there, they're just gone. not making it. Right. So, the question to me, and and I don't have the answer, and I don't know if we'll, if we'll get an answer here, but if a, a, a distillery is being mothballed, mm -hmm. why are you mothballing? You're, you're shutting down operation for a reason. Business, something is shutting you yeah. down. And to me, behind that reason, it's got to be financial. There's got to be money behind Taxes, it. Taxes, finances, so something. So if money is behind it, why don't they sell that whiskey they have in the storehouse? For the same reason they're not making it. Because there's no market for it. Okay, so, so they're going to hold it, stuck and age on it this because it's like it's like having stock. They, 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 yeah, I mean, it, it, this was the era of white spirits. They okay. can't sell them back around. Right. They can't. They can't get rid of their barrels. Right. So, so why would I make more barrels if I can't even sell the ones I've got? You're on the Shut low end curve. Right. It comes back up. You, right. You cut all your cash flow. You have no employees. You have no bottling. You have no grain fees. You have no energy. All that goes away. All yeah. of your variable expenses disappear. So, yeah. honesty here, I gotta I. How did I miss the obvious? Literally, I was sitting at my desk thinking, I'm like, if I own this distillery and I've got to shut it down because I can't afford to keep it running, why don't I start selling the whiskey I got in the warehouse to get rid of it? Well, you can't sell it. That's why you're shutting it down. Because nobody wants okay. it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. There's the answer. So I didn't think we were going to get it. But anyway, what happens when a distillery is mothballed? They, they shut down operations and the whiskey that they have made that hasn't been bottled yet stays in the distillery it stays with aged. the distillery so if there's a distillery that's mothballed out there and y'all want to pull some money together and buy it with us 
you know, we're probably going to end up buying some whiskey with it. Yeah. Start some old you whiskey. You'll have some old whiskey. Yeah. Right. Which, and that happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, there's, like we said, when we started the history of these distilleries, they, they've all been shut down practically for some reason or another. So at the end of the day, there was this down period and then a new owner and that new owner gets all of those barrels of whiskey and it's up there. The, they own it. They can do whatever the hell they want with it. They can sell it off to blenders. They can they do whatever they want. need to do to get cash flow to start. Cash, yeah. Right. And, and that needs to happen. So we're up to the story of Glendron at closing down and then being repurchased. Right. And now we, we've got this guy, Billy Walker, right? I don't know. Who's this cat? Who's right? Billy Walker? I, I, you know, I'll tell you what, I didn't know when we started this six years yeah, ago. Yeah. I had no idea the guy was, but I <laughs> definitely know who he is Let now. Let me shake his hand now. Right. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, so anyway, he, he purchases this distillery and he wants to start putting these age statements together. Right. So he's got to, to, to do this one right here to do this 12, he's got to have, whiskey that is no less than 12 years old no less than 12 can be older can, well, but the rules say it can be younger right yep. so when you if you have a nice graphic to look at you want me to show now yeah probably not a what? bad idea to pull it up Graphics. so we can talk about it but if you have a good graphic to think about this and 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 try to explain this i i kind of wish i was uh I had a whiteboard and Dr. Scott's to really kind of make this, it's hard to, to talk through it. But at the end of the day, what you end up having there is let's, this, let's use the very top line, that red line that represents the 12s. And we'll get into the 21s because that's really what we need to talk about. But the 12 makes it easy to describe. Yep. So in 1995, they put some new juice down. Yep. Brand new, put it in the barrel and crack. We're shutting the doors. Oh, damn. down goes Frazier, right? They <laughs> shut the doors and it's closed for 96 all the way up into May of 2002. Now, fast forward to 2009, Billy Walker owns this stuff and he's like, hey, man, I want to put a 12 year old out. All right. Where am I going to get the whiskey to put a 12 year old out? He can't use any of that liquid in the 2002, three, four, five, six, yep. seven or eight. Why? Because it's not 12 years there old. There you go. <laughs> So he's got to go all the way back and start using liquid from 1995. So he's going back to stockpile. He's going yep. back to stockpile. Well, if he's using that pile, that stockpile, actually, that's 14-year-old whiskey. Wait a minute. So it's older than what See, it that says? Is, that's what's so weird <laughs> that, about this. Obviously, always, we're being silly I always here, but yes. so weird is that you've got, you pick these ages essentially randomly. Yeah. Now, admittedly, uh, at the time, there, there it's not random. I don't see more inf information coming. No. But the 12, 15, and 18 was, was kind of a a trend or a, a standard at the time. But not it, really, even though. You're right. It wasn't even technically a standard What, what picked? Why did you pick 12, 15, and 18? I don't know. But that it's, is it's, the standard. It's, 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 it's a be the normal. It's an interesting, and then 21. Yeah, 16 so. year olds, eight, I mean, it's, it's like 12, 16, 18, 12 year old, 50. Yeah. I don't know why, but that, you know, it is. I mean, it, they come out with different ones now. 12, 15, 18, back, 21 yeah. seems to be the standard. Yeah. But you definitely are starting to see more. Especially 10s, in 2007. Especially eights, in 2009, 12, or 10 when you were doing it. Right. 13. <laughs> so anyway, pull the graphic back up because we talked about the 12. So what happened with the 12? Well, check it there out. <clears throat> the 12 in 2009 was actually 14 years old. And then in 2010, it was actually 15 years old. And if it was bottled in 2011, 16. Well, finally, when you get to 200, 2013, it's, it's 18. You were getting an 18-year-old whiskey in a 12-year-old bottle. And then in 2014, it reset to 12. Why? Well, because it started in 2002. Because you got 12 year, year old whiskey from 2002. So it makes sense. The math adds up. The only question is why did he just bottle it at 14? He's got 14 year old whiskey. <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> I, I, well, skip the 15 I, I, I and go over to the Well, because he can make more 12s and make more money on the lower well, age. Or, and, and so it, it, my faster, guess is it, it had to do years. with something with the amount of liquid that was produced each year. And he had this vision going forward. That I could maintain an 18 for so long and well, 15 for so long and core. You want to keep a core together. You're gonna to have to have a lot of liquid, and you've got years don't come by fast. Well, so. and, and if you put a 12, 15, and 18, if you look, if you look on this chart, he can produce all those today, mm. and he can get it, keep it going for several years. Right now, with the with the stocks he's already had, and by the time it runs out, he's got new 12, new 12. Right. 
And so, so there is some logic to it in that with his stocks that he had, he knew that I could keep a 12, 15, and 18 year, year going long enough for indefinitely. So basically, you're telling me business 101. He's forecasting, he's doing supply and demand, and he's looking at his warehouse. Exactly. My warehouse says that I could produce these forever because I know in five years I'll have new 12 I can use. And we're good to go. So yeah. to me, the, the respect level goes up even more because number one, he's he's known How do you vision that? about putting you know cherry bombs together and being able to do that. But yes, that that forecasting, that business logic, because you got to remember, he's a whiskey guy, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is a business, so money is going to drive decisions, right? Exactly. You, you're going 100%. to have that. so cool. So let's we'll get back into the graphic in a second, but let's talk real quickly back up for the core because I want to talk about this one more time. So these are available today. Technically, these both are. However, all four of these are all four. But of however, these they're harder to find. Like the twenty ones, you can find them, right? Yeah. But they're but they're getting harder. They're yeah. getting more expensive, not so much harder. They're getting more expensive. You can find yeah, price all up. four of these guys readily available. Um, here in the states, we're talking two fifty for twenty one eighty for the eighteen. Uh, I don't 15 know. Fifteen is about one twenty now. I think maybe even more than that. Maybe more. The, the, the tw yeah, let's say one twenty, and then the twelve is probably right around sixty five bucks. Seventy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's right there, hovering right there. It used up. to be forty, whatever. Back. I in saw. The day. I saw some people on the the comments were doing between sixty and sixty. Yeah. 70, yeah. But the, so the so a lot of these things have stayed true. However, the 15 is one unique because it changed uh, a few years ago, right? right? Because the original 15 um, was just PX. Just Oloroso. Or just so, Oloroso. And then the new one now has PX and Oloroso. Right. And when we'll, did they make that change? We'll talk about that in the in the, uh, the, the, okay. the issues. No, but we'll, we'll talk. I mean, we'll, we'll get to that's one of the issues. They made the change of... Man, I'm losing it because I think I'm losing a year for COVID. I'm sorry, everybody, but you know, you, we all live in this world. Well, we everybody chart, loses chart sells, a right? year. No, no when they made the change, that was oh. that was like probably two or three years ago. Yeah, I want to say two or three years ago. Two years ago, Travis Fairclough in the in the comments. So, so you're telling tell me, me exactly? They, they, so my assumption was that they were only using Oloroso prior to 1996, and then after that, they started filling in 2009. They started filling. Um, into px is that not the case one more time so so my thought was that my assumption you guys please check me that in 1996 when they, before they shut down they were only filling all well that's a good question i, I, I would did, think they i would think so they didn't bring in the px into their lineup until after they started no, no. filling in 2002 i think they ran out of juice no i don't think that's necessarily true it, oh, I, finishing? I yes they were finishing in PX. Right. I see. I see. I see. Taking yes. the, taking some of that old Oloroso, finishing in PX. Yeah, 2018. The, I don't necessarily know if they've always been. Oh, if you read their website, they pride themselves on Oloroso, Pedro Zimenez, and Oloroso cask. They've always, James Allardyce, way back in 1926, that's what he wanted. He wanted to be a sherry matured scotch. So I don't, I think. PX goes back just as far as Olo does. Mm. Oloroso. I'm not sure about that. I um, I don't I know. Think PX Sherry was the, was a thing in. I don't know. 1996. They, I, I think don't. you're right. It makes more sense. I'm not a Oloroso. I'm not a wine guy. I don't know. I mean, I, they could be finishing. So that's fine. I would say they're if finishing. You've got something from 1996. We'll find that out. you're putting a, a PX in. That's fine. I derailed you a little bit. Go ahead. But get back on the track here. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, the, this one has already changed recipe is what you were trying to uh, uh, Yes. Yes. This is not. But everything else is the same. It's just you can get them. Price is really the biggest issue here on some of these. And that's just part of the world we live in right now. And some of it's just because of it's, it's hard to find, hard, yeah. harder to find than normal. And, and these 18s, and you're, we're going to get into this a little bit, is because of some of the things we're talking about makes these more valuable in that, that realm. Right. So when we've shown this graphic and showed you guys how we get to the fact that there is older juice and, and our potential for older juice in this, but yep. let's actually get into and show you one. So, okay. so yep. I, I have no idea what these two are. I know what the year is on this one. So, I'm so gonna we need pull, a graph. I'm going to pull this bottle open. So let's talk to a scenario, Mark, here. So you're, you're, you're telling me basically there's more – aged juice in some of these bottles than what the, the age the label says. says right but you're telling me that 
you're, we're going to look at one and show the example right now and then talk about how they might be at get lucky as well and find one as well. So right. walk, talk us through how you're going to do that. Okay, so I know that exists in this this Allardyce one. This is a, a, a Glendronic 18 Allardyce, um, delicious bottle. When I look at the bottle, it says 18, just like you would expect it to. But on the very back of it, um, in laser etching, it's really hard to see. you got to have the it's right light. Beautiful. So I usually end up getting a flashlight. I put the flashlight behind the bottle and I can see the labeling behind there. Sometimes you got to go, oh, it's easier front ways this way. So is it laser it says, etching or is it printed on there? It's, it's, I, it's printed. I think I think. it's, it, it's, oh, it's, it's dot matrix. Dot matrix. It's printed. really yeah. hard to see. So this bottle says. So you're looking at, there's a dot matrix number below the back label. Yeah, right okay, below let the me, um, Close to the camera so you can see her. But can you can you put it up there? Maybe? Is there any maybe. way you could be able to see that? Maybe get this on the uh, screen here so we're so you can see it. Plugging. Drew's driving. There right. you go. Right. It's gonna be really light, but basically, if you look down, it might not. It's Hang right on. below the label there. So see if you can get the light on it. It's not focusing on you guys very well yet. I don't think we're going to see it. Right. Okay, no, it's there. Okay. So it's, 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 it's on that it's spot it's below right, the label. It's right here at the bottom label. So you have to look really closely. <laughs> anyway, this particular one said 2019. Uh, now I turn my, my, my 2019 February 26 at 1755. Six. So this is a. This so is this a, was bottled at 5:56 p.m. on February 26, 2019. That's when 2019. the juice went in the bottle. So taking this graph, I know some people have linked it already, and you can look and just just search for Glendronic chart, and you'll find it on Google. But 2019 mm -hmm. is the year that was bottled. Yep. You scroll down to whoever bottling this is. This is the 18 year old. And you're telling me this is actually 24. a 24-year-old scotch in an 18 This is 24-year-old Allardyce. So this sat in an in, in Oloroso cask for 24-year-old years, not 18. Big difference, guys. Big difference in juice. Yeah. So that, that's interesting because that – there is no – it's a single malt, so there is no other whiskey younger than – the 24 year old because there wasn't any produced right it's not like it's a johnny walker where they can kind of well i can pull some from this this still and put right. it in there it's a single malt, so exactly nice. so i mean and and there mm -hmm. in, in lies the the gem the hidden gem right well if you go back to the graphic you've seen that time is already reset for the 12 time is already reset for the 15 time is reset for the 18 and i got lucky because i knew about this and made sure i got one <laughs> last year well, this is where we're at, okay, guys? This is where we're at. We're at the 21. And I got to be honest, when we talked about the idea for this, I even said to Drew, I'm like, man, we, we put this on a YouTube channel. That means it's it's going to be even harder for me to buy one because I got to have one. They're out there. I got to have yeah. one. But, but here's, a pro here's a problem with that is you have to look yourself or coach someone virtually because like buying online, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here a you are bit, a little bit. But it's it's really hard. I mean, you, you have to know what you're looking for. Right. So that's how to check your bottle. You walk into a liquor store, it's easy to check the bottle. I mean, honestly, they, they might get a little upset that you're pulling a bottle out of the, the, the tube, but to heck with them. If you're going to spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks, whatever, I'm yeah, going yeah, to know. I'm going to know before I buy it. How do you do that online? It's pretty hard. It's impossible. I'll be honest with you. It's, it's not impossible. quite impossible. There are websites out there that will post the picture of the date of the bottle. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's how I got this bottle. I mean, literally, um, they they know about this, uh, what did we call it, mothball hiccup. <laughs> yeah. And so they're very cognizant of it. And those websites, because they're cognizant of it, they're also cognizant of their price. They'll, they might have five bottles of 18 on their shelf. Four of them are new and 18 years old, but one of them is 24 years old and they know it. So they're asking more for yeah. it. I get it. I understand that. But the 21 is really the only one that we still have an opportunity that the distillery is going That's to put left out. over from the years of right. Know, that, I mean, right. so we're hoping if you look at the trend, honestly, they all seem to be bottled in the month of February. So I'm hoping that this girl's getting filled next month, right? <laughs> um, because that's going to be a 20. What's the age of that? Is it 27? What's 
Um, Let's go back to the chart. I'm pretty sure if you pull the. Uh, so 27. Yep. Yeah. 27. Th scroll up. Make sure it says 2022. Yeah. So 2022 is going to this 21 year old is going to be 27 years old. That's a. Well, wait. And so that is suggesting, though, that there may be in February of 23. Well, yeah. Some 21 year olds. That's right. So 27 year olds. Because Wait. it was February of, it was February of. Boy, now you're really getting into split hairs well, because the difference so, so, between February and May. So the, the the comments were coming through that that if you have something that is if you that was bottled in January of 2020, oh, yeah. that it would not it would still be the old 18. So so but in in general, what you're saying is if anything that's bottled in 2022. Will be 27 years old. Anything, not just the stuff in February. That's right. So, but but in January 23, you might still be right. 27. So you, you, basically, but, what you're saying is, if you're in a store and it doesn't look like something that's been moving product for a while and scotch, and you see some 18s or in 21s, do yourself a favor, take them out of the bottle, take, and, look yeah, at and you tapes. you may because, find a couple yeah. of older bottles in there that are printed at 2019, 2020, 2020, 20. Yeah, you might find 17. a twenty twenty, or you might find a twenty one that was bottled in seventeen, and that's about twenty one years old. I mean, it's, so yeah, it's, it's not going to be as old. But, it's not going to be as old. But the key is, yeah, look, pull them out, look at the date, and and figure it out. And there is going to be a little bit of fudge factor in between February and May, almost like buying a car, right? Exactly. Well, I bought this in twenty twenty one, but they're calling it a twenty twenty two, whatever. But. Um, just that that graph that you see doesn't have months and days, right? No. So it's it's all based on years, and that's the quick, Ooh, easy one. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. I have a picture of that graph saved on my phone, <laughs> and I reference it when I'm looking at Glendronics, and now when I'm going to be looking at it, I will pull that graphic up and be like, "That's my girl," you know, or Got "No, one. I don't." Got yeah. one, yeah. Because yeah. I'll, in, we'll talk pricing. We we've already talked a little bit of pricing. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. This guy right here is two fifty in the states. The twenty one. The twenty one. You know what? I have found it online overseas um, in the last couple of years, uh, maybe not since COVID anyway, but for a buck 30, buck 35. Yeah. Wow. It's hard to find now. About two bottles right then instantly. I mean, when I'm getting it for, a, you know, so. You, and then you get home, you're like, well, let's see. Yeah, you never know. You might get lucky because I didn't even care what year it was. Right. right? I'm still getting a 21 year old for right. a damn good price. Well, the beauty is with 21, they, they are only old at this point right so if you find any 21 year old even if it's a couple of years old it's still 25 yeah. year old you're absolutely right mm -hmm. you can go to the liquor store right now and go grab the first 21 you see and i it's older than 21 yeah I guaranteed yeah hey real quick guys i want to right. say thanks to zach for the super chat hey smash zach. the like button he's right guys if you are watching Cheers please do us here. a favor the, the like button is like mm. with youtube changes or stuff all the time if you're watching the replay as well please the like mm. button is the number one thing that helps our channel more than anything else for replays so thank you so much for that Zach. so yeah the, the bottom line is if you like glendronic and you want to bargain generally find the 21 if you can so it's not cheap but it may be a bargain if you can find a 21 year old whiskey for 27, a 27 year old whiskey for let's, that price. Let's also backtrack for a second and talk about Glendronic flavoring, as for example. Okay, great. So, yeah. right, because mm -hmm. if you're getting into Glendronic, what what are we going? What what's a person going to expect with pretty much all every one of them? All of them. Glendronic. There, there, there's a few outliers. They do every now and again put a peated. I've seen a Glendronic peated. Um, what? I oh, have yeah. seen one, yeah, yeah but seen it, those are offshoots. And then they've got like the, the cast strength eight, which is not going to be nearly as heavily sherry, if you will, these, oh, but yeah, at the end of the day, that's what they do. They only produce sherry mature whiskey. That's what they want to do. That's what they're that's known the for. Do. That's yeah. the core. And so if you're a whiskey drinker and you're not a sherry whiskey drinker, Let's say you're a bourbon guy or you just like a good old Highland, like you were talking earlier, a light Highland. What? Nothing. I was meaning to time the drink. <laughs> uh, anyway, you uh you don't you don't you're not used to this heavily I, I want to say four to 
fortified. It's not fortified, but what is why why are why the flavors does, fortified? Yes, from the cherry. Yes. Why does this Glendronic look this color? They don't add color, okay? Let me be honest. So that's that's a that's single dark. cast, right? That's like Edward why, is it, why does it look like that? How do they get that like that? Well, it's because they're putting it in cherry casks that held Pedro Zimenez or Oloroso sherry for right. a long time, or long enough for the wood to soak that that up, and then it's it's coming back out in the whiskey that sat in it for 27 years, right? Right. right. And so, what kind of flavors are you going to get? Obviously, Oloroso. Yes. All right. These are these are basically sherry heads, right? and. But now we also have PX, yeah. and there's even a port wood out there. But we'll, so, what's your difference between PX and Oloroso, guys? So PX, in my view, is is a much more bright, a much more fruity. Um, whereas when I think of Oloroso, I think more of a leathery. It's a kind of an musty. older, musty, older kind of um, a little charring, know, maybe too, depending. Yeah, on. there's a little bit of that. So when I when I think of the differences, I think when I think Oloroso, I think kind of musty, old, um, rich deeper like raisins whereas when i think of of um a px it's more like plums and so it's a brighter fresher fruit as opposed to the older dried fruits in all row so that's kind of that's a that's my quick figs all that yeah, fun exactly. stuff yeah i'm i'm with him there yeah. you go and there and there's your freaking difference between olo and px in under 30 seconds <laughs> and, and, and honestly there there is a pretty it's hard to describe it but there are pretty good differences on those flavors and of, and of course with within oloroso you've got a range and you're going to get some of those fresh uh fresh fruits and some olorosos but in general that that's kind of the the guidepost that you go by yeah i agree mm -hmm. but that's what glendronic does and that, i think that's what they intend to continue to do yes. now when we talked about the history and the buying and selling who's in charge right we we stopped short mm -hmm. of saying who's actually in charge at the helm right now dr rachel barrett barry mm -hmm. And look, she's a huge powerhouse yes. in the world of Scotch. It's not, you know, she obviously is well known and knows what she's doing. And I don't think she intends on changing the direction of the ship. Correct. Um, but she's making changes she that she needs, to, <laughs> that she foresees she needs to make for the, the future of the distillery. I don't know where those changes end up. We'll talk about them here in a, in a hot second when it comes to the issues in the future of Glendronic. Yeah. But, um, well, let's get into those issues. Yeah, let's, let's and, talk. I mean, let's go through so uh, the first, and I don't know if these. This is not an all-inclusive list, everyone. There, if you <laughs> think you can come up with another issue or what you foresee as the future of Glendronic, feel free. I'll be the first one to say that Glendronic is no different than other really big popular distilleries that have cult followings. Absolutely. You know, you got your Ardbeg heads out there, right? You got your McKellen lovers out there that just die. Lefroigs. Mm -hmm. um, Edra Dower has the Edra Dowerian Knights on, on Facebook, right? Yep. Glendronic has the Glendronic Appreciation Society. Mm -hmm. And there is a whole underside of the Glendronic site that people love Glendronic. And they that's they are constantly watching secondary markets. They're sharing information. They're buying bottles like this, bottles like this. They know all of this stuff and they're on top of it. What how do they feel about what's happened with Glendronic in the last five six years right that's because because let's think about it. Mm -hmm. you know right dr dr barry took over um and things have already changed a wee bit we we look and see this recipe's changed the, the so the glendronic 15 has changed what how how what's it well they ran out of store <clears throat> to be able to continue that line correct so and, and some people argue this is the debate right and we we tasted it and i, I if i recall correctly it was hard to distinguish the taste between the old and the new even well, though it technically has px and one doesn't so so that's the key is number one it's a 12 year old spirit so 12 years ago they decided what they're going to put in the cask she didn't have any influence in that billy walker put those in the cask he didn't he didn't have she didn't have anything to do with that I put Mark's comment up there. Yep. Save that thought. We'll so get that out. in about five minutes. But so <laughs> the key though is it's a changing whiskey industry too. So white spirits are coming up again. They are know, vodkas sure. and gins. Um, people don't want their grandfather's whiskey. So when you change a whiskey to bring up bright fl bright flavors by adding some PX in over top of that. Um, Oloroso, you tend to change the flavor of the whiskey slightly. And, and part of that is based on stocks you have. 
part of it may be intentional to, to brighten their whiskey, to, to bring up and, and bring up fruit, fruit notes that I yeah, think may be trendy. They're not going to, so, I, I hear your point, And I think that's part of every company is just to stay trendy mm -hmm. or what's hip and stay on the market edge of the market. I don't believe they're going to change those. Four. It's not as easy for the Scotch industry to be as trendy. It's not as easy for the Scotch I industry. Think, to I think they'll do more direction, more of some of you know the independent bottlings. I think they're, they're going to come out with one offs okay. and test the waters and see how things go. Here, here's what I predict out of of Glen Dronick and and actually a, a lot of other distilleries out there. They're going to start coming out with your Monkey Shoulders and your Glen Morangie X's, something yes. that's cheaper. Because here's what's happening. And this is just my own opinions. Take it for what it is. Yep. This stuff is awesome. I love it. We all love it. Absolutely. It's great, 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 great liquid age correctly. But we, you know, we're experienced. We've been around the block. We know what's going on. But what's hot to your point right now, what's trending is younger generations from, you know, from early 20s. White to, claw, smeared off ice, all so, those kind of things. But, that come but, it's, out. but it's, they, they want quality, but they also want price. And so, and it's something and also think about from a business standpoint, you got to churn this stuff out faster. And what's what are they battling? Well, years, right? Years. Yeah. So it takes time. It takes time. So there, I guarantee you all these companies, not all of them may be able to make it work. One running might not be one of those. I don't know. But I guarantee they're at least thinking about something. They're not going to change the core because it's solid. They've got a history. It's it's amazing product. They're going to they're, they're gonna have to come up with some other things. Well, they're they're, they're going to tweak the core. Because they've only got a, whatever the spirit they have. Yeah, like they've already tweaked the 15 is what you're saying. They've only got they've only got so many spirit. They don't have enough Oloroso to do only Oloroso maybe. Mm -hmm. So that's actually the question right now. The, yep. the, the rumored question out there, is there enough stock to even be producing, uh, to even be bottling? The last bottling supposedly that I could find on, on reading on, online was uh, 2020. They didn't even do a bottling of... Of 21, really? Parliament 21 in 2021. So I don't know if that's true or not. I read an article about it and that, that kind of was like, what? Ding, ding, really? Are they out of store already? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to be looking for a bottle of 2022 bottle of 21. I can promise you that. So but, the other thing that you that has that that some of that 25, 26 year old whiskey may be going to that 18. Yeah, we'll, well, we'll I think I think what we're, we're all agreeing here is yeah. that this is a Phenomenal product. Yes. And they're, I think they're probably right now in a, a stage of flux trying to figure out what to do because they are running out. Time is the other essence. Yep. So what are they going to do? And Billy Walker's gone. I mean, not that they're, they're still in good hands, but oh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Berry's, but, uh, but things people. have changed, right? So, but in with that, they, they, there's other changes that we're seeing already. So, guess what else has been removed from the, the packaging on Glendronic? You know? Non chill filtering. When you, I, whoa, whoa, man, yeah, whoa. lights go off, man. Hold on. What the hell are you talking about? What did you take that off for? Right. And you know, there's a statement on their website that Dr. Barry addressed it, saying it just allows them some more flexibility, if you will, on, on their and producing their product. And I'm, I'm not going to dispute what she's saying, I absolutely, but that's a big proponent to people who are going to spend a couple hundred dollars hell on yeah. an aged statement hell whiskey. Yeah. You know, I so it's tough, especially when you've built this following in this this community that really is into your product that you make that change. So I don't know if they're done swallowing that pill yet. I will see how that goes. But um, I, I, I put Mark Milner's comment up earlier because he said the future of Glendronic to him is an Oh, you mean like this one? You mean like that one, right? Uh, so yes. what does that mean? Why would that guy say it? Because the chat is oh, I'm filled. What do you Glen know? Alke. Yeah, why are we trying? Yeah. Why would who cares about Glen Alki? We're talking about Glen Brunner. Yeah, it's a different different company. Wait, talk to me, Goose. <laughs> so when you got That's a guy it. that has created the cult following Glen Dronick has, and that's Billy Walker. I mean, so so well, okay, so his styling have created a whiskey that draws a great deal of followers. So he left Glendronic. He bought Glenallachy. Well, and he's doing the same thing. Th they already produce great stuff. He's going to like make them. So, so, so you're right. 
Klonalki has been producing whiskey. They've got lots of stores. They got lots of stocks. But now you got a new master blender that is. That and he's only when are we working with what he walked into. That's yeah, what I was so going to say. When are we going to see some of this? That's what excites me is well, to see what they're going to do with him or what he's fun, going to do with them. That's a funny, th fun thing he's doing is he's taking what they have and he's styling it to his palate. So yes. He may be finishing. He may be taking their older stock. He may be doing something similar that he did. I mean, Billy Walker has a formula that he he likes and, and it's been successful. True. And I can't see him changing his formula much because this is his. He, 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 he bought, knows it works. He bought this. He it, it's it's not like um, Brown Foreman hired him to run Glen Allocky. He bought Glen Allocky. So he can right. run it however he wants. If there's something that excites me in the scotch industry right now, it's the fact that I can't wait to see what he produces. Glenn Alkey is definitely my my target for the next couple of years to see Absolutely. what comes out of the woodwork. Because I am a Billy Walker fan. I love what he's done. If he can do that to Glenn, Glenn so Alkey. So that'd be fun oh. to, to try some old Billy Walker and with right. in, in like three or four years. The Billy Walker Glen Alkies and, and put them side by side. Yeah. It's like, did he just create his own formula? See, I don't know because honestly, the, the right off the bat, just pour this Glen Alky. Been drinking these Glen Bronics, and of course, it's a there's a different distillate. Well, it's yeah, a, it's, of course, it, of you course, know, you get that. It's definitely a different oh, yeah. different spirit. Um, but I'm I'm obviously people are, and I am excited about what's going to happen. Now, I'm not going to lie. Over the last year, I've had a couple different Glen Alkies. Some I've really, really liked. Some I've been like, okay, yeah. you know, I'm not going to buy it again. I'm not disappointed. But there's the the cult is starting to arise <laughs> underneath it, right? Yeah, it is. So I, I don't know if that really is true, if that's the future of Glendronic or not. I hope not because I really do have a soft spot in my heart for Glendronic. And when I talk about that soft spot, it's so, yes, we can get the, the cores and we can get this limited stuff. But to me... I, I went through a phase of hunting these kind of types of things. So, right so what are those? People might be listening. We're right. Honest. So well, if you're listening, so put put up uh, whiskey crossings. Uh, <laughs> this one here. See, whiskey what's crossing it say? comment. So the both the 18 and 21 are out of stock on fine drams now. Your show is a nail in the coffin. So we uh, might have. Uh, we may have already. Yeah. So you're. So if you're. Uh, uh, <laughs> Damn you, whiskey. If crossing. you're a store owner and you're selling this right now, you're welcome. <laughs> Right. You're we, welcome. We take gifts. <laughs> we, we, we would um, review one of your bottles and give you um, product placement. Listen, well. people, I told you I wanted one bottle of the 21 this year. Yes. <laughs> if you're a store owner, just send us one, one bottle. On that. One bottle. That's all we have. Anyway. I've gone through uh, uh, quite a, a love with, yes. with hunting these these single cask um, Glendronic yeah. bottlings. And, and they really are unique. And it's really fun to watch if you get into Facebook with the Glendronic Appreciation Society and some of these groups, how some casks just take off and some casks don't. And what I mean by that, these are all individual cask bottlings. So this is cask 2381. It is a 19 year old Oloroso sherry butt distilled in 1995. That, that was a gift from y'all. Yes. Yes, yes. So that's that's one. Let's open it. it. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm saving it for a special occasion. I got two bottles for sure that I'm saving, and this is one of them. Thursday is a great that's year. That's a great celebration. Great. No. This is my latest one that I bought, and it's been a while. This is cask 5538. It's a 13-year-old PX punch-in. And I've actually purchased side-by-side -side Glendronic single casks that were similar in age, and one was Oloroso, one was PX, just to do those kinds oh, of yeah. comparisons. Um, they're really fun. They're really good. They're awesome. I hate to tell you guys, they're going up. Yeah. I mean, uh, even on the secondary market, yeah. the last auction that I participated in, which has been over a year ago, I really thought I was in line to snag one or two of something uh, like this at a good so decent hard. price, and they went through the roof. I mean, like double what I was willing to pay. It was oh, crazy. Wow. But – I love the fact that Glendronic has this program, if you will, where they do these single casks and you can find out about these, these cast numbers and research them and they're um, getting them is a little bit more of a trick. It's, it's kind of more of a game. It's so more of an art. It's interesting because they're, they're distillery release. I mean, they're not like independent bottles. No, you're right. You're, you're That's absolutely really interesting. right. These are distillery so, release. So do they have like a, a, like a extra page on the website for their single cask offering no How do you find out about no them? you don't so uh, it's crazy you go to the website and all that you'll find information about is the latest one 
oh, this one. Oh, and it's not this one, but you know what I mean? It's like, here it is. It's batch 18, and the cask number is... So it's, like, it's like a lottery almost, and they're in, oh, we know we're going to put out this. So, so they don't, you know, like promote <laughs> what they're doing. They just like, here's one, good luck. Here's one, good luck. And did you ever look this one up? Oh no! So I didn't. Um, let's uh, let's go back and finish this. So this is the one Glendronic Twenty One we have right here. We do have an open bottle, so we've got an I open think you one. Did. Twenty-seven. Didn't you say it was twenty-seven? We've got an open one. Of, no, I can't have a twenty-seven yet. Oh, okay. But so we have one that this is Drew's from from the UK. Let me share it again here real quick. And I have a bottle that was purchased in the UK as well because they've got the UK <laughs> tax stamp, right? <laughs> So when I look at the dates on the both of these bottles, let's see, we've got two different bottles of Glendronic Parliament. 21. Mine's 2019. I looked it up earlier. Yours is 2019. Mine's this one's 2019. This is February 5th. Bottle at, at 1606. So right. 406 p.m. on the 5th of November or February in 2019. Yeah, so they're both 24-year-old bottles. Okay. 24-year-old bottles, which let's let's look. This is a 19-year-old bottle. That's a single cask, so that's a little bit of different. Yeah. Obviously, these are more than one cask, but um, I just, to me, when we first learned about this whole thing, it was like almost. It's it kind of like you're kind of excited about like a kid in the candy. It store had like because, a treasure hunt. Yes, yes. you know, I got this map. Fear, and of, this fear of FEMO, fear of missing out, right? Fear Where? of missing out. Gosh dang it, you're right. But uh, I mean, if you guys want to get into the differences between the core ranges. I mean, honestly, I think there's a lot of debate between these two. There's a lot of people that love the 18 more than the 21. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I may be one of those. I, I love them both. I love all these, actually. But that 18 has a special place in my heart. That's I, your girl, I, I right? love it. And honestly, it's it's probably because the taste is great. But, you know, we talk about it a lot. Scotch is also kind of memory-based and kind of timing, et cetera. And that time we went to New York together, and we and that, <laughs> oh, that, that oh morning forgot about that. <laughs> we, we we killed that bottle and i tell you what it was delicious and i still to this day enjoy it not just because of the taste but but because of the fun memories we had i was together. packing these up tonight to bring them over here and i put that one in the bag and i told my wife that story i'm like there's a picture of me hitting that bottle at like 7 30 in the morning oh because my gosh. Breakfast we're in this crazy hotel breakfast and ramp. that was the only thing that i could think that was gonna save me and she's like here are the dog i'm like you're damn right babe i needed to hit that bottle yeah. <laughs> so some would say that even 18 year old whiskey 18 year old scotch is kind of the sweet sweet spot for for scotch that when you get older than that you tend to get too much barrel influence and you lose some of the dis the distillers um character so the 18 is a sweet spot for a lot of whiskey i'll be honest with you 18, 18 yeah. has more of an influence than 21 the 18 seemed to be more robust to me but yeah that's another I I, if, let's knock let's let's knock um lens running for something if you're not a sherry lover let's say you're a clean spirit type of person you like those clean highland parks mm -hmm. or, or you want something that's more lighter just a i want a, a traditional floral? bourbon fin matured whiskey Good. right this is like what well, my oh you that. guys poured half a bottle of wine in my bottle of whiskey thanks right i can see yeah. where people uh, can can be put off by that um but do you think glendronics are over sherried that's a thing people say you're a sherry bomb i don't that. i don't think so i think they're i think they're perfect they're not to me they're not they're to me when i think of like What's a great sherry bomb? And I think Glendronics are right there in the sweet spot for that. I, I've had plenty of where they're way too much sherry. Um, McAllen is is notorious for some of that. Um, but Glendronic to me, I think is a sweet spot of, they just have a great recipe for their sherryness. Like the, Yeah, I, I think you, you still get a lot of the distillery character out of it, mm -hmm. out of each of those bottles that you can tell. If you were to do a flight right now, the 12 to the 20. They're related. Right? You, you can definitely tell that there's the core is there right and and That's you get awesome. you get more flavor and depth as you go through there so yeah i would agree now the one thing we we kind of skipped over we did talk about it briefly but non-chill filter so we 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 said that the the new releases tend to be non-chill filtered i know the 12 is 43 percent abv 
the 15s are, I don't know if they're going to 43 or if they're just going to non or there's, they just took the non chill filter off that. I, that think one, they, I think they just that took one's it off. That one's at 46 percent still. So, but this is still one of the newer ones because it's PX and OLO. Yeah. So, the, the but it, and it says though non chill filter. It does say non chill filter. So there's a controversy of that the newer Glendronics tend to be chill filtered, or they they don't say they're non chill filtered, which implies that they are chill filtered. Right. Yeah. Um, I would. So if you were to blind taste a chill filter versus non chill filtered, there are very few people that would actually be able to tell the difference. I think so. So, too. so from what I'm hearing, if you blind taste it, it's very difficult to tell. Sounds like a good topic. Theoretically, Dr. Scotch could do a topic on that would be fun. What does chill filter blind do? Test us. How does it taste? Let's do some some tasting. Oh, that's a great idea. That's what I think you should do. Maybe what maybe Dr. Scotch will come through and see what he can do. Yeah. And, and talk to chill filter and versus uh, not chill filter. Great. great. So great now show. we're gonna get some humble pie. Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, this one's not chill filter. Not chill filtered. <laughs> well, actually it's filtered. So, <laughs> so why why would why would you chill filter your spirit? If you've never done it before, why would Glendornick all of a sudden start chill filter? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't I don't know the answer. Easier, faster, to, cheaper to produce. I don't know. Well, you, you I, it's not cheaper. More consistent you, product. You got to chill it down. That's the key. So it's not. It's never going to cloud. It's never going to cloud in the bottle. It's not going to cloud in your glass. It's going to be a clean spirit. Well, now put a that, rock on it. It's not going to. It's not going to cloud. It's not just that. It's also uh, maybe it's more expensive to do it. So I don't know what their value is. But if I'm going to bottle at forty three or forty percent. Um, so I can stretch that the still it. I can stretch it out uh, a little bit uh, uh, instead of can. instead of two hundred bottles. I get two hundred and twenty five bottles. Um, that there's a a value in that. There is value in that. Yeah, and that but if sense. I'm going to bottle at forty percent or forty percent, I definitely want a non chill filter because if you pour oh, it, it, it all of a sudden cloudy, you're right. Exactly. So okay, I see. Yeah. It. So a chill filter gives you clarity. It gives you clarity through adding water, through adding if you want to put a rock on it. It gives you clarity through all that. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. sorry. Hey, <laughs> Travis said clarity, which we're on that, and the Asian market. <laughs> well, true. So you got that. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> but anyway. Now, but also, if you consider what the classic thought of a non chill filter whiskey, it's heavier, it's it's thicker. It's got this viscous. heavy, viscous mouthfeel. That's that's the classic uh, theory on it. If you're going to a brighter, lighter whiskey, do you care? You don't want that, right? You you you're adding the PX. You're chill filtering, and now it's a brighter spirit. But you're still getting the flavor profile from that PX that you wanted. So there's exactly. there's benefit. There's up and down to everything. I definitely. Where are you going? Yeah. I I don't appreciate when people just beat the hell out of a, a scotch right off the bat because oh it's chill filtered. Wait a minute here, man. Let me put a blindfold on you and you don't even know what you're doing. Tell me, did you enjoy that? You know, yeah, that's that's a, what, that's a whole another debate. Right. right? Absolutely. Like, like, do you really know what you're arguing against when you taste it? Right. All those. There's lots of things there. Guys, it's yep. been a great show. We're at the yep. end here. Uh, Real quick, just want to make sure if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. It's super important. Please hit that like button. I also dropped in our overlay there our, our Patreon channel. So if you're not a patron, love to have you. We oh, you got to join in. After shows. Because yeah, we got an after show coming up right we here. Do, do we, we have the link to, to that graph? I want to make sure anybody yes, that's watching. It's been, it's been posted a bunch Good. of times. Steve chat. has put it several times in the Thank in the you. And it's really easy to find. So just Google it. Um, and Mark, this is a cool topic. This it's is fun. I, I love think it. These, these are the things that I know that we like to do. Like we, we go hunting all the time for dusties but this is a good one that we've talked about it here and there in live shows in the past but this is a good topic that if you're catching the replay and you you made it this far congratulations thanks uh but uh this is a cool topic and i think it's interesting and it's it does kind of make the hunt a little more fun like if you are if you're going to the liquor store now you know if you don't have a glendronic yet especially the 18 and 21 and you're in, you see this on the shelf be like hey I see those real quick and then look at the number because you may be getting more bang for your buck than you even know about. That's I correct. hope you do. I yeah. hope you do. And I hope I get a 22 too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a good evening. We'll see you. Three, two, one.